I just met with Andrew and wife of uh, Carl Sagan. Oh, yeah. Who directed Cosmos. I'm generally a big fan of Carl Sagan. He's super cool and had a great way of putting things. All of our consciousness, all civilization, everything we've ever known and done is on this tiny blue dot. People also get, they get too trapped in their like squabbles amongst humans. And just don't think of the big picture. And they take a uh, civilization and our continued existence for granted. They shouldn't do that. Look at the history of civilizations. They rise and they fall. And now civilization is all, it's globalized. And so civilization, I think now rises and falls together. There's no, there's not geographic isolation. This is a big risk. Things don't always go up. That should be, that's an important lesson of history. In 1990, at the request of Carl Sagan, the Voyager 1 spacecraft, which is a spacecraft that's reaching out farther than anything human made into space, uh, turned around to take a picture of Earth from 3.7 billion miles away. And as you're talking about the pale blue dot, that picture, the Earth takes up less than a single pixel mm -hmm. in that image. Yes. Um, appearing as a tiny blue dot, uh, as a uh, pale blue dot, as Carl Sagan called it. So he spoke about this dot of ours in 1994. And if you could humor me, I was wondering if in the last two minutes, you could uh, read the words that he wrote describing this pale blue dot. Sure. Yes, yeah, so it's funny, the universe appears to be 13.8 billion years old. Earth is like four and a half billion years old. You know, in another half billion years or so, the sun will expand and probably evaporate the oceans and make life impossible on Earth, which means that if it had taken consciousness 10% longer to evolve, it would never have evolved at all. It's 10% longer. Um, and I wonder, I wonder how many dead one planet civilizations there are out there in the cosmos that never made it to the other planet and ultimately extinguished themselves or were destroyed by external factors. Probably a few. It's only just possible to tra to travel to Mars, just barely. If G was 10% more, it wouldn't work, really. If, if G was 10% lower, it would be easy. Like, you can go single stage from the surface of Mars all the way to the surface of the Earth, because Mars is 37% Earth's gravity, thereabouts. We need a giant boost to get off Earth. Channeling Carl Sagan. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mode of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. This is not true. <laughs> this is false. Mars. And I think Carl Sagan would agree with that. He couldn't even imagine it at that time. So thank you for making the world dream. And thank you for talking today. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.